Righto, so I've just knocked off uh, six hours of hand polishing. I'd like to introduce you to what I think, or I hope, is going to be my new best friend. So I've moved these two uh, cabin modules. These go against the chamfer panel and form the bases of the uh, cabins. In fact, they're the staircases, the beds. I think I've explained that before. Uh, they're in pretty rugged shape, but they're going to need at least 1,000 and 1,200 grit wet and dry to restore them back to a, a reasonable luster, and then probably three or four buffs, and then sealer glaze, which is a uh, release agent uh, gel coat sealer, and then... Uh, two or three coats of release wax, that TR high temperature wax that I'm going to put on them. So I've got a few days work uh, ahead of me here, um, but the good thing is that I can spray these both at once and almost gel them up on the same event, and then uh, as soon as I've done that, I can then uh, obviously laminate them uh, almost to completion, get them released, sit them in the boat, and then I can uh, work out where the bulkheads go. So. Yeah, very, very uh, important part of this. It's sort of slowed me up a little bit, but it's going to be part of the uh, part of the whole process. It's got to be made anyway, so I might as well get them done. So before I do any restoration on any of these uh, modules or the mold itself, uh, the large mold, I, I inspect it pretty carefully to find out any little imperfections or scratches or anything that might need uh, top-up gel or repair before... Uh, making all the effort to wax and 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 obviously restore it so uh, i've got a fairly oxidized surface i've actually kept these ones out of the sun they've sort of been facing the morning sun and not the afternoon sun and the lunchtime sun here which can be pretty brutal here in oz um but still they've uh, endured about 10 years out in the sun and, and it just it, it is a bit of a testimony to gel code i could cover these things with tarps and and uh you know i can't Unfortunately, I don't have the storage, and not many of us do have storage to store these things inside out of the weather. But fiberglass is amazing. You can restore this to a luster which is worthy of, uh, of pulling a good product off. And you've got to remember that this is the internals of the boat, so I want this to look really nice and shiny and easy to clean and, uh, and obviously mildew resistant in the works. So putting a bit of effort into these is, uh, is really important right now rather than uh, having to then work on the final product. So I've, I've identified a couple of little spots here and I, I sadly think that I did the damage uh, yesterday when we were trying to manhandle these bloody things out of the, the back area I've got around the back of the factory here. And I've got a couple of scrapes here. Now I could um, certainly grind them out and fill them with, with gel coat, but they're quite light and I'm thinking that I'm just gonna bevel them back and fare them back a little bit and, and, and just leave them as they are. Because if I start adding gel coat to old gel coat, I'm, I could possibly end up pulling that off with the product and end up with a clump, a clump of it anyway. So uh, that's such a minor thing in an area that really is hidden almost by a lot of fiddles and, uh, and, and timber. Better off to just, uh, I'll use a paddle pop stick, a uh, tongue depressor and some sandpaper and just sand it back and get it nice and neat and then I'll buff it out. Save me a lot of uh, mucking around. All right, you can see here already, uh, I've spent about probably two minutes on it. Um, that is now gone, and that is not gonna have any noticeable uh, sort of ramification to the end product. Once I now work through my sandpapers, I'll go 300, 400, 600, 800, 1200, I'll buff it. You won't even see this, it wouldn't, it'll be totally unnoticeable. <laughs> so sadly the devil's in the detail um, I'm sort of probably spent a good half an hour just sort of massaging this back to a, a, uh, a correct shape I just don't want it to look a little bit unusual I'll start off thinking oh it'll do but it's not going to do you know I, I want to make sure this is absolutely perfect so um, I'm almost there with this and I'll start uh, the complete hand sanding of these modules so a common practice with um, little chips and scrapes in, in moulds, you know, just to speed up production in factories. And in fact, I know I do, I use this quite a lot with um, kayaks. If I end up with a gel coat chip or a scratch or something, I might, uh, if I need to get the product out quickly, what I'll do is I'll get some plasticine uh, and simply fill that void 
and uh, and get it as, as flat and level as possible and then simply lay up over the top of it gel over it lay it up and then buff it out in the end product now that's that's pretty commonplace don't uh, think that all these modules stay in perfect condition i mean they're half a ton in weight and and being maneuvered around areas where i've got nice expensive uh, prestige cars hanging around me and uh, and other boats and things and you know things are going to get damaged so um yeah there are shortcuts you can take I, i'm not a big man on shortcuts i'd rather have the thing ready to go again um in this case i'm not that concerned about it because whether i make another boat or not is a matter of conjecture but having that uh, ability to be able to quickly turn something out is uh is certainly a, a great option and plasticine a good quality modeling clay uh, used for for molding and things is is a great way to shortcut so if you had a chip say here you can simply fill it with uh, a bit of plasticine and then your end product basically is just going to have a slight lump in it you're just going to buff that out and no one will ever know so i intend to uh, machine sand all this with a uh, sort of a dual action orbital um, pneumatic sander and that, that way I can sort of put as much water as I like as a pneumatic, I'm not going to electrocute myself or anything. Um, the, the problem with mechanical sanders is that you can't get into little areas that are uh, sort of shaped like this. So you better have to do that by hand and then fair out and then join in with your mechanical sander. There's no point in trying to do it all with a machine, even though it's a, it's a good shortcut, you'll end up blunting the end off or dulling off an edge and you want those beautiful round corners corners and particularly on a boat you want round corners um, yeah, it just adds to the effect so a couple of things you need to consider is, is don't go headlong into it with a mechanical sander as much. sometimes just nothing but handwork is going to do the job and in this case that's very very pertinent so you can see here I'm just maintaining the shape very lightly all I'm doing is restoring the luster on the finish So that's uh, polish number one. So this module of the back, here, this one's now had 800, 1000, 1200, wet and dry. Then a cut with a fine cut. And uh, the next stage on that one is uh, sealer glaze twice. So I put it on once, buff it one way, put it on again, buff it the other way. And that way I seal any porosity that might be in that gel coat. Um, this one here is about to have a complete cut with a uh, with a fine cut and then uh, the same deal with the sealer glaze. Come back, uh, I'm gonna have a few days off, need to go away for a couple of days and come back and then I'm going to uh, basically wax it three times and then next day come in, gel coat it. Now because I'm such a nice guy, I'll spend you about six hours of hand polish. Um, you've seen a little bit. <laughs> I've just done the last sealer glaze. So sealer glaze is a TR product. It's actually pretty widely distributed all over the world, but great on moulds that are a bit old that need to be sealed and, and really good on a finished product. So when I get these done and I'm buffing out the boat, I'm going to put the uh, sealer glaze on it as well just to seal it. It actually helps with cleaning, uh, reduces mould that can be harboured because gel coat in its nature is technically a bit porous. Um, the sealer glaze fills all those little voids and gives you a beautiful glossy finish. So just for you, I'm going to give you the last two minutes 
of uh, buffing of the sealer guys. You can see the finish I've got on these moulds is, is, is next to perfect. You know, it's, it's, these have been sitting in the sun for 10 years, so come up really well, and uh, and the finished product will even come up better. But that's it. Here we go. Okay, let's do a little fly over these moulds. Um, I think you'll agree, they're pretty cool. Um, they're not exactly perfect. I, I will say there's a couple of little blemishes on them, but you know, for 10 years sitting in the sun, to be able to restore these in about five hours, I've done two moulds here in five, five and a half hours, give or take. Um, all I have to do now is a couple of coats of release wax, or maybe three, hand wax them, buff it off, spray the gel coat, pull the product off, and then put them back into storage. So I guess it begs the question, um, let's uh, take this mould for instance, it's say three to four square metres in size. You're talking about, you know, quite a substantial amount of, uh, of, uh, of, of rent on inside of a factory. You're better off if you can store them outside, so I do. I, what I try to do though is I try to now, well, now that they're restored, I'm trying to point them away from the sun. In a, in a fashion so they're pointing away from the harsh sort of midday and afternoon sun. Our morning sun's not too bad, so they're not going to break it down too much. But, um, you know, this is ready to go, pretty much ready for its release agents. And, um, you know, for a day's work, it's not worth storing them inside if you don't have the space. Obviously, if you've got a massive factory, fair enough, store it inside. But... Personally, for me, storing them outside, even better, make a product on it, like gel it up and put another um, uh, two layers on it or something just to have a product to protect the mould. That would probably be better than storing them inside. I'd like to introduce you to what I think, or I hope, is going to be my new best friend. I've just unpacked my new um, mini gel coat diaphragm pump and spray gun system. I'm trying to work out how I was going to mount it because it's, uh, it, although it's quite small, it's, uh, it's, it normally comes on a little, like a little tool table, but uh, to save on shipping, I opted not to take that. Um, I've come up with a bit of a solution. I've ordered one of these uh, portable welding carts that I've got my plasma cutter and my welding uh, rig on. And I've just assembled the uh, the welding cart here, and I've got a, um, a one inch thick or twenty five mil thick or thirty mil thick uh, piece of um, bench top, kitchen bench top. Mounted that to the top of it, where I'm going to be able to mount this welding cart to. So I've uh, determined the centre line here. I've actually mounted this and bolted it to the top. I've also made this top level because it wasn't level um, for a welder. You typically have it on a slight angle. But uh, by making it level, I'll, I'll now be able to mount this um, gel coat machine. It'll be solid. It'll be something I'll be able to tow around. And I'll have room for, uh, you know, the hoses on these um, brackets on the side here. So as you can see here, this has some mounts under it. It's quite weighty. It's probably about uh, five or six kilos. But um, that's going to mount right here somewhere on this welding cart. And I'll be able to uh, tow it around. There's also an area at the back of the welding cart here that I'll be able to put a 20 litre tin of gel coat on as well and have the uh, the gun and everything hang off off the side here with the hoses. So yeah, nice and compact and a good way to deal with it and I'll be able to tow it to any job and put it in the car if I need to and take it out to, uh, to other jobs as I'm working on boats around the place. Yeah, it's just a neat compact little unit. It's... Uh, supposed to be pretty efficient up to about 10 square meters of gel coating and uh and resin spraying so pretty impressed with the unit so far i have actually seen one in operation at the factory that where they make them and uh and yeah i'm hoping to promote these for the use of uh you know boat builders and anyone i like that doesn't like popcorn guns because I, I personally don't like them i like to have a little bit more of a controlled um measure So all set up, ready to go. Look at that, solid as a rock now, and uh, just on the perfect mobile trolley. Um, my large gel coat or external mixed uh, gel coat machine is around about 90 kilos, so it's a fair effort to move it around, particularly from up on the big mole that's about um, 10 feet up in the air on a pallet rack. So 
Um, I came across this one through the same company. It's a miniaturized version of it. It's a, actually a diaphragm pump. And I'll try to show you some close-ups of it as I'm speaking to you. But um, essentially, it works exactly the same way. It doesn't, however, have the um, high-quality Graco gun. It has a similar system, which is a small uh, standard sort of um, uh, spray gun. But it does actually have an external catalyst. Um, I can put up to around about 100 mils of uh, catalyst in there, which I, I guess will give me close to 10 square meters or even you know, um, probably about eight square meters of glassing. So it's gonna be ideal for things like the modules I'm about to do. I haven't actually fired this up yet, so I'm gonna do a bit of a test panel of the gel coat on some flat sheet uh, up on here, just on some flat gel sheet that I've got there. Um, obviously with release agent on it, but I intend to pull a, pull a piece of glass off it or a bit of flat sheet. But the beauty of this is that the catalyst comes out of here and uh, to be able to see, but the catalyst comes out of here and meets once again, around about an inch and an inch and a half from the gun tip. So once again, all I have to do is remove this, the nozzle and clean the gel coat out of the nozzle and I can leave this primed for tomorrow to come back and uh, do some more gel coating or then I can flush it out and then use it for uh, you know saturated resins and, and the like. So yeah, really a good solution to uh, an age old problem for us uh, glasses is not having to mix the resin and again, saving resin, saving acetone and cleanup, and at the end of the day, getting a, a much better job. Right, so I've moved my big main compressor. I've got another spare, but I've decided to use my big one because this system's so reliable. Uh, you can see the dew points uh, correct here with my air dryer. So this, this system, as I've shown before, runs into my air dryer, uh, runs through the air dryer, then it comes out here. There's a waste dump down here, this clear tube here, comes through, out through these filters, and you can hear that hissing. So I've got these filters open to allow them to flush a little bit, so we'll shut them off. Shut them both off. And these uh, have a little cartridge in them, like a little foam cartridge with a carbon filter in them. So we're removing around about 98% of the moisture out of the air. So a uh, very, very effective thing. If you, honestly, if you don't invest in one of these and you're doing a big job like this, you're crazy. This is uh, nothing compared to the cost of, uh, of stuffing up a gel coat finish. So this is now running all the way along here. High pressure hose all the way up to the new gel coater. Sorry if I'm walking, but um, my high pressure hose hooks in here, and then I've got control here of the pressure, and I can increase that pressure. You watch this the pressure increasing as I as I wind up. And you'll hear the diaphragm pump start to pump. Now there's nothing in the diaphragm at the moment, so I don't want to run any liquid through that just yet until I get this all set up with the catalyst and everything because I'm going to do a test piece as I mentioned earlier so I'll just let the compressor build up to pressure and uh, we'll go from there but yeah I'm pretty much ready to go I've just got to suit up uh, close the joint down a little bit um, make sure that nothing I'm not going to get any overspray and you'll see I've covered uh, my molds over here with uh, a tarp and a Pokemon duvet color <laughs> that was all I could find so we've got uh, we've got Pikachu Looking after my males here, and uh, I don't know what the other guys are called. My son was into it, but I certainly wasn't. Okay, so after about um, three hours of gearing up and tidying up this space, I've got about a six foot square area. I'm just gonna do a test spray with this new machine. I'm hoping to get the catalyst exactly right. There's no exact percentage. Uh, minimum means 0.5 of a percent, and maximum is 4%. I wanna strike around about one and a half percent, so I'm hoping I can sort of dial it in. I'm gonna do a test piece on a piece of cardboard, and then I'm gonna spray it onto some flat sheet, and that flat sheet will then, um, hopefully in three or four hours, I'll come back and check it's okay, then I can come in in the morning, and with that catalyst setting, come in and spray all these modules. Um, that's what I'm banking on. I haven't used this machine before. I do start to worry when I'm using a new machine. It's like you're sort of dealing with an atom bomb. You don't really know what it's gonna do, but I believe it is very, very useful. Um, I'm just hoping I don't have any problems with it, but we'll give it a crack, eh? So the first thing I need to do here is, uh, is fill this catalyst um, uh, reservoir with a, around about 
100 mils of uh, normal MEKP. Um, it's I'm using polyester on these modules because it's inside. I'm not that worried about uh, about <laughs> osmosis or anything. You know, we can keep it clean very easily and keep it moisture free. But uh, this this cup will take around 100 mils of catalyst. And I always put glasses on and put a mask on. I'm a full face man these days after my little incident a few months ago. But I'm not going to even think about pouring catalyst without a mask on these days. Into that cup. So it's simply a matter of screwing that in place. Right, so I've just put the intake tube into uh, the white spray gel coat, and it's important to use spray gel coat, not brush gel coat, because spray gel coat has a, uh, a, a sort of better viscosity for coming out of a spray gun. Um, also, it's important that you secure this so it doesn't fall over. So you'll notice these welding carts have a chain, and that chain holds that uh, that um, uh, tin in place without it knocking over. Because you wouldn't want to knock that over; you'd have a shit of a mess. So it's, it's interesting when you play with a spray gun. I've turned the catalyst right down so none will come out. Because I want to test the air pressure coming out of the out of the gun, and there is a noise you hear, and we call it the wall. And that wall is, if I put my hand here and spray air, and then I move it in, you'll hear a definite or a sound, a solid sound. That is the optimum atomization of your product. You hear it out here? There. There is the wall. Around about 12 to 15 inches or 30, 40 centimeters out, we get the definite wall. And that is the sound we want to hear. That is the optimum atomization of the product on your surface. Okay, so at least I know the air pressure is flowing through. The second thing I've got to do is make sure the catalyst is spraying through. And I can dial this small knob here and dial that out, and all of a sudden I get catalyst running through the product as well. So I'm not going to do that right now because I want to test the diaphragm pump to make sure that it's physically pumping the fluid to the gun. Now I'm just going to highlight that anything could happen here so always gear up in your safety gear. You don't think oh I'll be right I'm not spraying I'm just testing the machine. Anything could blow off. One of these hoses could explode and cover you in catalyst and well not so much catalyst but gel coat. You don't want that so gear up make sure you've got a clean environment around you that you can easily clean up and all your safety things are in place. So we're going to turn it on. Well, we've got air pressure coming in through the inlet. I've got an air knob here. I'm going to turn up my regulator here and I'm aiming for around about three bar. And we should see fluid pumping. You can see it happening here, look. Oh yes, I'm a little bit happy. I'm a little bit happy. All right, so we've got fluid pumping through. And it's going to continue to pump until it gets, the vessel is totally full. Should see it come out of here at some point. Yep, there it is. It's now making its way down to the gun. See it all happening here. We've got fluid right down into here. All right, so right here I've got a leak, so. I'm instantly going to depressurize and tighten it up and hopefully uh, circumvent the leakage because it obviously hasn't been tightened up correctly. So we're taking all the pressure off. Good. Two hours later, I find out what's wrong. Um, this little nipple here that has the hose attached to it has a fracture in it. What is it? I don't know if you can see it. See that? Look at that! Bastard! That has taken me two hours to work out because it's taken me two hours to get clean enough to find the prick. 
So I've got to try and find something like this. Now I'm thinking a barbed um, uh, high pressure air hose or something where I can clamp the hose to it because that's just simply not good enough. And now I've got to find a step down to get down to this. So it looks like a half hour or a half hour drive into town to find a, a, a hardware shop that sells something like that. So that's life on the mold, I'm afraid. <laughs> you've got to modify, you've got to problem solve. Problem solving is the, the daily ritual here on the mold. So if you're going to build a boat, get ready for it and shit ya!